Hi everybody, a lot of students ask, hey, why isn't every industry perfect competition? Well, one of the reasons is intellectual property. For example, it's applied well. She is this. Okay, so now we've learned about monopolistic competition, oligopolies and monopolies, and it's time to ask the question, why don't companies just all copy each other and we end up with perfect competition with everyone selling the exact same thing? Well, one of the reasons for this is intellectual property, all right? The reason market economies are so successful is because they sort of unlock human potential. Um, the point is giving people freedom to invent new things and progress society forward in this manner. But as we know, market economies alone with no government intervention at all can lead to some serious problems. One of them would be this. So imagine if you and your friends invented a new car airbag that makes cars safer than ever before. And you try to sell it to General Motors for them to use in their new car. General Motors, of course, very interested in this. They agree to buy 10 airbags from you, okay, for $100. And they take those airbags back to their headquarters. And what they do is they literally copy exactly what you did. They study them and make the exact same thing, put it in their cars, and they never buy from you again. You're crushed. You spent all this money and time inventing something. GM has it. They use it. And they're making all the profits on it with never paying you again other than the $100 to get it originally. Well, that's kind of a problem, right? I mean, why would you ever invent something if that were the case? Well, the framers of the United States foresaw issues like this, so they put the following clause into the Constitution. Article 1, Section 8, the Patent and Copyright Clause. It states that the Congress shall have power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. Now, one of the most important concepts in economics is the word incentives. Incentives are what make people strive for success and for progress. Without intellectual property laws, why would anyone have the incentive to invent new things? Think about the example I just gave with General Motors and you inventing the new airbag. Why would you spend time inventing something that someone else can just steal from you? Well, the answer is you probably wouldn't. Thankfully, we do have intellectual property law that would protect you in that situation. Before selling it to General Motors, you would apply for what's called a patent, and then you'd be protected, right? You could then sell your airbag to General Motors, they would buy it from you, and they would not be allowed to steal your work. They would have to buy your work from you every single time they wanted to use it for all of their cars. And then General Motors, already a massive company, would obviously be able to sell their better and safer cars, but you would also have your own very successful company. I'll use this example later on, but there's a company in upstate New York called Corning, located in a little town in upstate New York, that sells glass to Apple that they use for their iPhones. It's pretty amazing, and one of the reasons they're able to do it is because they have patents on their specific glass-making designs. So, with intellectual property law, or IP as it's known, actually helps encourage people to invent and create new things because it protects you. Uh, going forward, we'll learn about trademarks, copyrights, patents, and sort of their limitations under fair use, and learn about how that helps spur the economy when you allow people's work to be protected. Therefore, they have the incentive to invent new things in the future and progress a market economy forward.